It's a fact that in Judaism, an agent can speak as though he is his own sponsor. That's the law of agency. There's an occasion in Genesis 18 where three men showed up to Abraham. And one of the three, not all three, one of them is actually addressed as Adonai, God. Is that a problem? No. The one of them, not all three, was actually reckoned to be on a par with Adonai. And as Adonai's representative, he's actually addressed as God, as Lord. And then later, the Masterites are very careful. They talk of two angels, two of the three. And that time, they don't use the word Adonai with the same vowel point. It gets a little technical. They make a distinction because there's still two angels, two men, and they're not representing God in the same way as that one angel was. Certainly, the angel can speak as if God, and Jesus can address Thomas as if he's God. He's not really God, of course. We know that Jesus is not God, literally. But that law of agency comes very close to saying that a sponsor is as his agent's person and vice versa. That's, that's, that's a good quote. And of course, if you were to say that God was an angel, literally, you destroy the text which says that no angel is God. It's obvious that Jesus couldn't be an angel, literally. To which of the angels, you tell your Jehovah's Witnesses friends in a gentle way, to which of the angels did God ever, ever, ever say, you're my begotten son? Never, ever did he say that. Therefore, Jesus cannot be a begotten angel. That just ruled out. The whole point of Christianity is lost if Jesus is not a human being. He has to be. Otherwise, you have no savior. You've got a pretend savior. And he's, of course, from the tribe of Judah. And we know that priests were not normally at all from Levi. This one is from Judah. Very special.